Welcome back. All right, so we are going to move forward. And what I want to do now is I actually want to work on each plank individually. So each one of these individual rectangles here is a plank. So I'm going to work on each one of those individually. And it's a great opportunity to learn a little bit more about these for loops. OK, what we can do is we can actually nest another loop in here. So currently at this stage, you can see if I hit the spacebar G on the keyboard, it'll frame my selection. All right, so at this stage, I have this particular plank or this full plank, full row of planks, I should say. And what I want to do is work on each one individually. So we can drop down another for each primitive block like so. And we can run that in through it. So that way we can then concentrate on just each individual plank like so. Very cool. So very useful uh, to start nesting these things. Now you want to make sure that you keep track of all this stuff as well. Okay, so uh, what I want to do on each one of these planks is I want to, or actually I should say for all the planks, I want to give a little bit of a gap in between and I want to randomize that gap as well. All right, so let's come back down to this second loop here. And I am going to produce that gap by dropping down a poly extrude node. So let's just keep typing, there we go. So now I have a poly extrude node, so let me just move that into the line there. So that way it's in the network. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna get, give it a little bit of an inset. All right, so I can give it a little bit of this inset right here. And then I can come down, I can scroll down here and elect not to output that side. And when we do that, so let's just see the result of just that. I also need to make sure to turn off the single pass. All right, when we do that, we get a gap in between each one of those particular primitives. Awesome. All right, so we can control the gap size with this inset slider. Very cool. So I want to actually randomize that value. So we are going to go and create another meta node. All right, so I need to create a meta node for this loop. So this is why I highly recommend naming them because you could end up with a lot of these. All right, so I'm going to select this block begin node and say create meta import node. And this is going to be called our plank loop. All right, because we're looping over each individual plank in a row. All right, so now we have access to that iteration and the num iteration attributes. Okay, so inside of our poly extrude, let's actually just take the function that we built up here, this full expression, so the fit, rand, and detail functions. I'm going to copy that and paste that into my inset value. All right, now if we were to put that in right away, we're going to get this awful uh, mess of geometry, and that is not what we're looking for, and that's just because our values are too big. All right, so if I undo that a couple times here, you can see that our value that we kind of uh, maxed out on, I would say my max is probably about 0.03, and my minimum will be like 0 0.003. So let's do that. So what I'm going to do is paste that expression back in there. And I'm going to say our min is 0 0.003. And our max is 0 0.03. There you go. So now we have a random inset. And that works because we are looping over each primitive individually. We are running that operation, that poly extrude operation, on each individual plank in a row. Cool. All right, so let's go and do our next order of business here. So what I want to do is I also want to slightly rotate each plank um, uh, because I don't want them to be just lined up with each other perfectly. All right, that's, you know, it's not really realistic. Okay, so what we can do is we can drop down a transform node. So this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, utilize the history down here. Now the history is great for grabbing nodes that you're constantly using. All right, so Houdini will keep a history for you. So I'm going to drop down a transform node like so and wire that into the network. And I'm going to utilize that same expression that we built. And I want to rotate it on the Y because that Y direction is that. All right, it'll, it'll basically twist our planks in the Y direction. All right, so what I want to do, and I think negative four and four might actually be pretty good. So let's actually, um, and I actually forgot something here. We need to replace it with plank loop. So you'll notice that while it was still working, um, we're not actually getting proper rotation. And this is actually a good um, use case right here. You'll notice that while we have this expression in here, each row is rotated specifically, okay? We actually want to rotate each plank. And that's that means that we need to update the node that we're referencing with that plank loop instead of the main loop, like so. 
There we go. So now each plank is rotated differently. Uh, we also need to make sure that we do that to our inset. So let's put it in the plank loop. There we go. All right, so in our four degree rotations, a little excessive, we might just need to make this super subtle. So we'll do it between one and one. And you'll notice that we're getting this weird rotation value. Let me actually remove this. It's a good opportunity to also explain how to get rid of expressions once you put them in there. So hold down control and the shift button on the keyboard, and then left click on the value, and that'll get rid of the expression that you had. Okay. All right, so you'll notice that if I were to put in really big values, we're rotating around some invisible point right now. Okay. And if I were to hit W on the keyboard, I'm going to try to find it here. It's going to be in the center of the world. All right, so let me hit enter on the keyboard. And you'll notice that the pivot for all of these rotations is happening around the world zero. So that means we need to move the pivot point of this transform node to the center of each of our planks. That way we rotate around its local rotation. Okay, so uh, what I need to do to do that, to move that pivot, we need to come into this pivot transform right here. And if I were to hit enter again with the transform node selected, I'm going to hit enter. You'll notice that I can move the pivot around this way. I can also rotate the pivot, all right, to modify that. Again, this happens a lot when we're doing procedural modeling. So what I want to do on a per plank basis is I want to move this particular pivot point to the center of this primitive. Now, we, we saw that already with our full row. So what we can do now is we can actually just come in here and utilize something a little different. So for the transform node, it has a couple built-in global variables, all right? And for the centroid, it has the $CEX, all right? So you notice it'll pop up in the little IntelliSense. So I do that. You'll notice that it centers it up on the X direction, all right? So then if I do $CEY, it'll center it up on the Y, but we don't have any Y here, so uh, it's not going to do anything. You're not going to see any change. And then we're going to do $CEZ for the centroid in the z direction and voila we now have our pivot right where we want it so now we can come up here and we can put in our expression i'm gonna to have to go copy it again so let me go and copy this up here all right very cool and we're gonna put that in there and we are going to rotate negative one and one so let's just do that very cool so let's take a look at the results and maybe fudge the numbers a little bit. It's looking pretty good. Let's just make something really big. Let's put it back to that four degrees. Yeah, so now they're all rotating individually on their own pivots. So I would say 0.5, let's just make it really subtle. And 0.5, not five. There we go. All right, so super subtle, but it does actually help uh, when we extrude all these guys and turn them into full pieces of geometry. Very cool. Okay, so I'm going to close out the lecture there, and in the next lecture, we're going to actually go and detail this out, because our pattern is basically done. Now we can go on to extruding this out and adding the, the little nail heads uh, to this, and getting into some texturing, and then finally rendering this thing out. Okay, thanks so much.